Self-driving cars, they're the future. And I don't think anyone questions that. Now, some people may not necessarily like the idea of giving up control to a computer, but self-driving cars have the theoretical potential to eliminate traffic, to decrease fuel consumption, and to transport more people more safely than ever before. Google Waymo sponsored my trip out to their Chandler, Arizona depot this past weekend, where they have hundreds of cars roaming the streets autonomously. And while the incredible technology that we'll talk about is better than it's ever been before, I still think that we are many, many years away from having cars capable of truly driving themselves parked in our garage. Why? Well, let's find out. This video is sponsored by Privacy.com. Create virtual credit cards that protect your money. Sign up today with the link below. The Society of Automotive Engineers, partnered with the National Highway Transportation and Safety Administration, that's a mouthful, have outlined five varying levels of autonomy. And it's important to note the distinction between each level. Now, the first three levels, they still require a human driver, with only the last two being high automation or full self-driving. Now, many vehicles today ship with level one driver assist hardware as a standard feature, like radar cruise control. Now, more advanced systems like Tesla Autopilot and Cadillac Super Cruise are generally considered by experts as a high level two automation. If you're interested in what the cars you can buy today are truly capable of, be sure to check out my video I did a few months ago on Tesla's autopilot capabilities. They still require the constant attention of the driver, and because of that, they're not level three. And they can only operate dynamic driving tasks in very specific scenarios, such as on highways. That said, when they are in their controlled, limited environments, they generally manage all driving tasks, such as speed, steering, traffic awareness, etc. Now, there's a big jump in between level three and level four systems. Level four systems are being tested internally by over a dozen companies, but nobody gets recognition for full self-driving more so than Waymo, and for good reason. What started as a Google X project is now its own independent company under Alphabet. And nearly 10 years later, Waymo has no problem bringing press like me to check out their cars. They're even actually operating a closed beta taxi service to the citizens of Chandler, Arizona. Pretty cool. Their cars use four types of sensors, built in-house and retrofitted onto their fleet of more than 600 sexy white Chrysler Pacifica minivans. Okay, so maybe not that sexy, but they are packed with amazing tech. Most obvious is the funky looking ball cap, or toque for my Canadian viewers, with eight optical cameras that can see 360 degrees around the vehicle. Now, they also use front and rear radar sensors to detect objects in the rain, the snow, and the fog, where vision is basically reduced. Most notably, however, and this is something that is exempt from basically all vehicles being sold today, but is present on Google Waymo and many other really advanced self-driving projects, is LiDAR. Now, think radar, but using lasers. Unlike Tesla, Waymo believes that LiDAR is absolutely necessary for safe level four and up autonomy. Waymo says that its LiDAR system, which it's built in house, can reliably map visual depth, which optical cameras and even our eyeballs kind of struggle with. And it's accurate enough to see a helmet more than two football fields away in distance. Pretty crazy. But regardless of methodology, all of these companies are trying to create what's called sensor fusion, or the idea that combining data from multiple disparate sources increases the computer certainty of the object's existence. Basically, three different types of sensors confirming the existence of an obstacle is much better than one confirming the existence of an obstacle, especially since each sensor technology has different strengths and weaknesses. But you see, gathering data, it's kind of the easy part. Actually interpreting it is where it gets really hard. Look, us monkey-brained humans, we're not really very great drivers. We're becoming increasingly distracted by our smartphones, and we're even horrible at basic principles of driving, like properly zipper merging, keeping right on the highway, etc. A lot of things that could reduce traffic. But for as bad as we are at driving, we really don't get in accidents that often at least not on average, because there are more than 6 million car accidents that occur in the United States alone every year. However, that's only an average of about 519 accidents per 100 million miles driven, which means 99.9995, percent of the time that we're driving, we don't crash. 
self-driving cars need to be, at minimum, as reliable as the average human driver before mass adoption really makes sense. Now, Elon Musk said 99% accuracy is easy. 99.9% .9 accuracy is extremely difficult. And each added nine after the decimal point is orders of magnitude more tricky, if not impossible. And we need at least 3.59s. Now, Waymo may have very well surpassed that threshold because after 10 million miles driven, their system has never caused an accident. The average driver would have crashed more than 53 times in that same distance. Now, Waymo still puts employees in the cockpit for safety reasons, but I went on a 15 minute drive without him intervening even once. In fact, I was the one that pushed the start ride button inside the car, so he did literally nothing. The car handled the stop signs, traffic lights, cross traffic, even parking lots without issue. It didn't drive as smoothly as a human driver. Acceleration, lane changes, and especially turns were at times just a tiny bit twitchy. Left. Robotic. Well, really, it was kind of just like a really, really safe teenager who never gets in accidents. <laughs> not a bad thing, but not quite perfect. Now, that said, I never felt unsafe, and I would absolutely fall asleep in that car, driverless, without any concern. Well, so then what's the problem? Sounds like we're ready to rumble. Well, you see, Waymo is level four, but only level four in areas that have been specifically hand-mapped. That's right, Google drives around and automatically collects a bunch of data, but then they have to use human labor to actually build out their mapping structure. And I probably shouldn't make any assumptions, but given the fact that they're operating to the public in a very small suburb of Phoenix, well, it makes me think that this requires a fair amount of human capital to build out. And that's after more than eight years since Google initially revealed their low level four self-driving vehicles. I'm saying this all because despite what certain CEOs proclaim, <coughs> I don't foresee mass level five self-driving hitting the roads by the end of this year. In fact, I could be wrong, but I still estimate that it's more than a decade away. And when I asked industry experts what they thought, they said my estimation was probably still a little bit too optimistic. I often people see proclaim that the tech is ready. We're just waiting on legislative approval. The government is slow, we're ready. Sorry, pal, but that's not entirely accurate. Now, law in the United States is typically reactive. However, some states, such as mine, Utah, have already proactively passed legislation that gives level four and level five vehicles full permissive use, even for passengers without a driver's license. So it's, it's not legislation. That's the easy part. It's the tech. We're still not there yet. Now, Google Waymo is incredible. You can't help but be amazed as you sit in the back seat and watch the car drive itself fully autonomously. It truly feels like you're in the future. It will be a game changer. It will be a black swan. It will change the world someday, but not today. Because today is all about privacy.com, the best way to secure your purchases online. If that's not a segue, I don't know what it is. Privacy allows you to protect yourself online by creating virtual disposable card numbers. You can create burner cards that you can set spending limits on, and you can even create merchant specific card numbers. For example, this is one that I have with Netflix. It has an $11 per month limit and can only be charged by Netflix, nobody else, even with the full credit card number. Privacy lets you use any billing address you want and permits opening and closing as many card numbers as you please. Privacy makes money from merchants, so you never have to spend a penny. Try privacy.com out today with the link below and get $5 free when you sign up. Well, folks, that's all for me. Thank you so much for watching. Do you agree? Disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. But most importantly, and as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.